short-term holders retreat, long-term holders investors accumulate. I mean, come on, this is not this is not a surprise. We get all the naysayers, all the bears, all the people that panic and blah blah. Hey, they're just you know they they just don't understand. They come and go. Right? You see in the chat all the time people that are new to the channel that, and they don't quite understand what's going on and they, they take their frustrations out. But most of you guys, including myself, of course, we've been in it for so long. We know the right course is just to continue to hold on DC. That's it. There's nothing else you need to do. But this chart shows you exactly that. You can see. Short-term holder net position, you can see how big of a drop that is, the red, which means the short-term holders, the retail lettuce hands that have just come in, basically all exited. You can see when we we're going up to 73,000, that, that green spike, that's when FOMO hit, a lot of retail came in, and now they're all leaving, right? But the leaving is good because it's actually a sign of a turnaround, right? It's a bottom point, a capitulation point, and that's usually when we start going back above once again. Now, during these weakness periods, during some of these harsh times, uncertain times, dips do happen. And according to Adam Black, dips exist to transfer Bitcoin from weak hands, lettuce hands, to strong hands, diamond hands. So if you think about it, ultimately, that is what it's about. Who has the strongest hands? Who has the most patience? This is what I tell you guys. Have patience, focus on long term. Those that do not have patience, well, they tend to trade and tend to panic sell, and they are the ones left sour because they don't see the gains, they don't see the benefits. Right, but those of us that understand that continue to hold and continue to DCA, well, we will benefit, right? Obviously, as Bitcoin goes higher and as inflation robs more and more people of their purchasing power. All right, Bitcoin reserve also going down, down, down. Something else that's very, very important when it comes to price appreciation, obviously. When the demand goes up and the reserve goes down, what happens? The price goes up because it's just more valuable. And of course, inflation helps with this too because when everything is getting more expensive because there's more fiat being printed and circulated every single day, assets that have a set supply or limited supply, they will go up. This is also awesome to see. Bitcoin addresses with at least 0.1 Bitcoin. So at this point in time, it'll be like $6,000. People that have at least $6,000 with a Bitcoin is close to an all time high, right? So it's good to see that there are retail investors that are coming into the space and still buying what they can, DCA, mm -hmm. right? But Keep in mind, right now, $6,000 to buy 0.1 Bitcoin. Wait until Bitcoin is $100,000, $200,000, one day a million dollars. To buy 0.1 Bitcoin will cost $100,000. You could buy a whole Bitcoin for less than $100,000, but in five years, 10 years time, it's going to cost you $100,000 just to buy 0.1. So to become a whole coiner, is extremely, extremely uh, advantageous and difficult right now, but it's only gonna get more difficult going forward. Well, this is pretty interesting. This is pretty interesting. Uh, if you look at performance of major assets and asset classes, this is everything, including gold, equities, Bitcoin, bonds, whatever. So you notice that there are certain years where Bitcoin does not lead. And those happen to come right after the parabolic top, right? So they come after when crypto winter hits. But you may notice that every other year, Bitcoin leads and it's not even close. 
some of those years, we see thousands of percent gain, right? It's very common. So again, if you if you didn't know anything about Bitcoin and you're just looking at this, and you're looking at a performance of the last 13 years, what would you guess 2024 be? And what would you guess 2025 be in terms of the asset that's going to lead the way, right? If this was an IQ test, what, what would you actually say? Mm-hmm. Would you think anything else outperforms Bitcoin this year or even next year? The answer is no. Bitcoin does what it does. There's a lot of, I've always said this, a lot of distractions, a lot of things, macro stuff that's always ongoing. There's always scary things, but Bitcoin is pure and Bitcoin does this thing and it does not have emotions and it just keeps on going. And that's why when you zoom out, you realize that Bitcoin is the best performing asset annualized returns of 140% year over year over year. Yeah, you have some bad years, but predominantly they're all good years. So you just have to be patient and let things play out. And as for, you know, topping out, we're nowhere close. We have a lot of charts that have measured Bitcoin's top. And yes, we're nowhere close to top, right? We're not in the blue period. We're nowhere close. Bitcoin mining difficulty is is all time high. So that's good. The network continues to get stronger. The miners continue to bring on more and more machines to support the network and to make money by mining Bitcoin, right? Here's another one that's showing, yeah, Bitcoin, again, is nowhere near top. And here's another one that's showing that's nowhere near top. This one's actually measuring stablecoin supply and showing how, yeah, um, this is a bottom for Bitcoin. And we're, again, nowhere near top. Here's another one that's showing that a golden cross is coming. And, again, showing we are going to recover back up and we're nowhere near top. But short term, of course, what we want to do is get back up to 60,000, 70,000. And then, you know what? The next leg up can bring us to 80, 90, 100,000. 